Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time of praise and worship. What a privilege for us to come to the Father and worship Him and express our love to our God and to our Father. Uh, a beautiful time for us to uh, come before Him and minister before Him, enter into His gate with thanksgiving and His court with praise. And then we're able to enter into His holy presence. Praise the Lord. This morning, as we continue our series on Become New, um, we'll look at something that is very important in our life, that uh, is, a, is a gift, is, a, is, a, is something that is, um, while you lose it, it's never come back. Uh, something that can make up the rest of your life. Uh, what we call is time. Time is something that is very precious. And every morning, we get a chance of 20, new 24 hours. And if we let it waste and gone, we'll never have it again. We'll never have another Sunday like today. And so time is very important. And in order for us to become new, we need to learn how to uh, manage, prioritize our time better. And this morning, I invite you to look with me um, in the Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. And our message today um, is, is titled, Making Time for What Really Matters. Making Time for What Really Matters. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 16 said, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. The Word of God tells us here that we need to walk circumspectly, not as fool, but as wise. Wise, the, the people who know how to manage their time better uh, because we need to redeem in time. Because the day are evil. The day can go by. Uh, if you know how to manage your time, then it can be a blessing. And if not, you will see that the day go by, it can drag you down and destroy your life. So we need to look how we manage our time better. Making time for what really matter. Making time and what really matter is two separate things, but it's complement each other as we know how to manage our time. Stephen Covey, um, in his book, uh, talking about one is concerned the clock, this time. Make time. And the other is concerned the compass in our life. The clock tells us the time, but compass tells us what really matters is the priority of our time. And it's give us direction. The clock represents our appointments, schedule, activity, how we manage our time. And the compass, it tells us represent our values, principle, direction, what we feel is important, what really matters. So the struggle comes when we sense a gap between the clock and the compass. We, we know that we do things, but it's not match up with the values in our life or thing that we concern, thing that we know that it's important. Talking about making time without talking about what really matters is, um, is, is a waste or a mislead conversation. So I want to talk first about uh, set the compass in our life. How we determine what really matters in our life. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 2 verse 11 said, then I look on all the work of my hands had done and on the labor in which 
I had toy. And indeed, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. See, this man here accomplished a, a lot. King Solomon here. He built palace. He built a temple. And he managed to run his kingdom. It's so powerful and so rich that uh, they not even, even mention silver in his um, uh, country. He talked about gold. And so this man accomplished a lot. He, he had gardens. He had built the hang garden that we heard about. He had built a lot of uh, construction uh, building and all kind of things. But at the end of his life, he looked at it and he said, wait a minute, all of that is profit nothing. So he began to change and, and prioritize his, his life. At the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, this is the, the only sole purpose that we have, is to know God and live according to his law or his precept. So this man, after he looked at his life, he began to see that there are things in life that we invest in, we spend time with, which is a very important commodity in our life. And if we invest or not invest into the thing that is really matter, we waste our time and our life will never uh, get to the place of productive. So here we look at what is really matter. May I suggest to you that um, we will begin to ask ourselves three or four questions that is very key for us to discover what really matters. The first question I suggest is we begin to look at if you have only one year to live, what would you do? If you have the next 12 months to live, for example, people who come down with cancer and the doctors say they have six months or 12 months to live. If you're in a situation that you know that you have only uh, one year left to live, what would you do? I believe that people, if they, have, if they know that they have only one year to live, they will prioritize, they will do things that they, they wish they can do uh, before they run out of time. But my brother and sister, we don't have a year, a month, a week, or tomorrow that guarantee for us that we will live. There's no guarantee that tomorrow that we'll wake up and be alive. So setting into its place, what really matter? What really matter is the thing that you, you do and you know that it will leave a mark, an impact. As you will leave something in this earth before you exit it. Something really matter. The second question that we should ask ourselves to find out what is really matter is what would you like your family, friends, co-worker talk about you at your funeral? What are they going to talk about you? For some people, they say, man, this man make a lot of money. And then what? Because when the man lay in the coffin, he cannot bring any penny with him. What your family, your friend, and your co-worker were talking about you. I want my family and people that I know were talking about that. Pastor Khan or Khan Win, they know as a father, a husband, as a friend, as a pastor, that have left something significant and make a difference in their life. What really matter? What people you want to talk about you when they conduct your funeral service? 
I learned a long time ago that I make time and, and do things that is very important to the people who will cry at my funeral. You know, haters, they may give me problems, but I don't spend time for them. And the people who choose to not, you know, go in the same direction with me, I don't waste time to do that because I have so much thing important to do. So my family and the people who I know that they will cry at my funeral. We spend time and priority time for them. Now, the leftover, we may spend time to the people who we consider that we need to work with them and help them cross them over. But I focus on spend time with those people who will cry at my funeral. Does that make sense so far? That really matter, because by the end of our time here on earth, we need to leave an impact on people's life, especially our loved one. The third question is, how can God's kingdom gain first place in your life? Jesus tells us that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is his command. Then how can we let God's kingdom gain first place in our life? Then what you do to allow God's kingdom to gain first place in your life is thing that matter. The fourth question is, has God given you a task or tasks to accomplish? And if he has, that is thing really matter in your life. Because we are created by God, and, and, and when Jesus saved us and transformed our life, we become a masterpiece in God's hand, prepared for the ministry, for the work that he already preordained for us. So there is task in our life that is very important, that really matter, that we need to find out in order for us to be fulfilled in our life we need to find out what God has made us for that purpose. It's very important for us. If not, we just waste our time, run here and there, uh, fight like we fight the air. Like a shadow boxer who, who, who just, just punch the invisible. Just waste time. If you don't have a, a real purpose and direction in your life to do things that is really matter, you just make motion. You're not alive. You're just moving around. But if you focus on what really matters, it will help you focus your life and make your life as an impact, a blessing to other people. The second thing that we need to look at is learn how to manage our time. God create time and give it to us to steward. To God, there is no time. Or his, his sense of, of time is very different. For us, it's a minute. In God's eyes, it can be a thousand years. And for us, a thousand years can be just a minute, a second in God's eyes. Because He's outside of time. He created time for us for a purpose. You know, look with me when, when we enter into a place that we watch a, a basketball game, for example. You know, people can, in warm up, they can shoot many things, many balls into the basket, but this doesn't count. Now, if there is no time, then there's no game. There's no purpose to, to, uh, to go and see that game. But there's time when the birds is go off. Then the tip off. Then then everything begin to count. When God put us in time because there's purpose for our life, we see what we begin to do when God give us that time until the end of our life, when time is over for us here on earth. What we do with that is very important. That make up the purpose of our life. Very important for us to 
to have a compass to know really what is matter and then have a clock to complement it. So we can do things that last and do things that is make an impact in this world. Psalm 90 verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's the prayer of Moses, the man very busy. He leading and guiding more than one million people, adults. Uh, if you count the women and the children and all the things that he has uh, to take care of, the man is very busy. But he prayed and asked the Lord to teach him to number his day that he may gain a heart of wisdom. That man have accomplished so much. And I believe that God have granted him the desire of his heart that he know how to number his day, know how to manage his time in a correct way. You know, every morning somebody suggests for us to look at this way, that we are created with 86,400 seconds. 86,400 seconds. No balance to carry into the next day. No rollover. At the end of the day, it's gone. That's it. When time is lost, it's lost forever. You cannot reclaim it. Time that is used unwisely will reveal our weakness. One of the most valued investment we can make is to set aside daily time to sit at the feet of Jesus, to spend time with God, our maker. Check with him. Check in with him. Say, Lord, how am I doing? And on the purpose that you have created me for, to praise him once ago, sing a song that I have a purpose, I have a destiny. What does that purpose look like in your life right now? As you fulfilled it. Benjamin Franklin, the one who created more invention than any human being on this planet Earth. The one who involved in, in writing the, the, the constitution of the United States of America and involved in writing the Declaration of Independence in the United States of America. The man who creates so much and, and invents so much. He has shared with people how he managed his time. And he able to learn the secret to not only have 24 hours a day, but 48, 72 by cleverage, what he do, one thing can impact one or three or four other things. And he just multiply his time. He manages so much, so good, that he become known as a master of time management. This is what he said. Do not squander time, for it is the stuff life is made of. Do not squander your time. People who squander their money, they lost it, they may be able to regain it. But for us, when we squander the time, we were never able to regain it. When it's gone, it's gone. You may have four years right now to study in college. If you squander that time, you will never have that time again. If you Squander the time right now that you're in high school and you not use your time wisely. When it's gone, it's gone. So we need to learn to manage our time better. Those who are effective in their life, highly effective people in, in their life, they always will know how to manage their time. And so in order for us to be a blessing, in order for us to repair ourselves, to enter into God next, we need to learn how to change the way that we prioritize our time. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, our scripture is that, see then that you walk 
circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the day are evil. See, Paul reminds us here that we need to walk circumspectly, not as fool, but as wise. The phrase walk circumspectly is mean to be constantly look for every opportunity to invest your time wisely. You walk circumspectly before you take the next step. You make sure that that is the opportunity that you walk in according to the purpose and thing that really matter. You know, people don't walk in circumspectly. They just wander around, aim at nothing, so they hit everything at the same time. But the wrong thing, because there is no aim, no purpose in their life. Constantly looking for every opportunity to invest our time wisely as we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. How we do that? Manage your time. There's three basic principles in managing your time more wisely. First, set priorities. Very important. I have 24 hours a day, and I have so much things to do. If I'm not prioritizing my time, I'm in deep trouble. Dr. Cho Young, Paul Young Gi Cho, he said that he has a, a church of 800,000 members, four universities, a couple of news, newspaper company to run. and speaking engagement everywhere. And he said he spent time to pray and ask God to help him prioritize his life because he's so busy not to pray. He prioritized his, his time and he set priority. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 said, Everything has its time. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. You see, there is there's time. Very important. Everything has its time. I remember when my children grew up, Sam and Michael grew up, I always look at them and they say, they are five ones, they are six ones. I need to spend time and enjoy that time with them. And we we redeem every opportunity that we have to go out, fly a kite, go out and fishing and do things, live off the land when we're able to get together because everything had its time. Everything, there is a season. When that season is over, you're not able to get back there. In essence, we need a set our life priority or allow circumstance and other people to set them. Unfortunately, many people, their life, is where their, their priority was set by circumstance. They run from one fire to the other, always in a hurry, but there is no fruitful in their life because they allow circumstance and they allow all the people to set priority for them. We need to schedule priority. There's a right time and the right way to carry out our priority. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 5 and 6 say, He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man heart discern both time and judgment. Because for every matter there is a time and judgment, though the misery of men increase greatly. So there is everything is matter, there is time and judgment. We need to know and, and schedule our priority. 
If you not schedule it, it will flow to wherever circumstance and all the people direct you. We must schedule our time for spending time in the Word of God, in prayer, in things that is really important in our life, things that really matter. And then the third principle is stick to that priority. The problem with many of us as Christians, when, when time is, is, is busy and something is changed in our life, because we not prioritize our time good, we begin to subtract things outside out of our life. Unfortunately, many of us subtract or take out the time that we're supposed to have, which is the time with God, the time that we spend in read and study His Word, which is the food for our spirit man. For man is not lived by bread alone, but from every word that's come out from the mouth of God. The time that we spend in His presence we we'll receive rejuvenation in our body, our soul, our spirit. But unfortunately, we just cut it off because we're busy. We said, I don't have time for that. The problem is when we cut out the thing that is important, thing that's matter, we destroy our life. Planning your time. The Bible revealed that God, who is a planner. You see, when I look at creation, the, the sixth day of creation, and all that God have a plan. Imagine that He create us man on the first day. We're in trouble. He have to He have a plan to create everything in His way. And when the the environment is favorable for man to live, then He create man. And he also set aside a day of rest because he know that man need to rest too. So he is a planner. And everything that he, he did, we see that in creation, he even planned sea into everything that continue to grow and expand and we will see is fruitful and multiply. God is a planner and we are his children. We need to become a plan or two. Why plan? Planning our time is not about filling every moment with busy work, but rather organize our time around what is important. Our purpose is not just fill our time with things that is, 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 is make, us more be, make us busier, but our purpose is to prioritize the time that is important Make sure that it's in its place so we have to plan. For example, we need to plan time for God. This includes time for praying to God, a time that we study His Word daily so we can be success in our life and be blessed. Spending time for family and friends, relationship. Take a commitment of time together. And if we not spend time with our family and friends, we we'll destroy those relationships. We need to make time for our family and friends. Plan time for work. The fourth commandment tells us that we need to work on the sixth day and then spend a day of rest. We need to work six days so we have one day that we can rest. Plan time for your health. See, when you discover God's purpose in your life, and you recognize that you need a good body to deliver that blessing, that purpose, that message that God gave it to you to help people and, and deliver it to people. So we need to take care of our health. We need to eat well, and we need to get enough sleep and exercise. Very important for us to 
spend time for our health. And if you do that, then the pray for healing line will be shorter. And we were able to have a healthy body to go out and minister to people. Plan time for ministry. You know, when you serve God and involve in the ministry, it's not because church needs you, but because you are created to serve God. And when you look at it that way, it will help you, that ministry will bring fulfillment in your life. With our ministry, you not use the, 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 the talent, the ability, the gift that the Holy Spirit gives it to you in the right way. But when you use it, it will bring fulfillment in your life. You're just like fish in the water. You just explore with life when you are in the right place according to the purpose and the way that God created you to spend time in ministry, blending time for household joy and maintenance. And the book of Proverbs tells us that the man who just lay there and sleep, very soon he wake up and see his house deteriorate and life around him go bad. So we need to spend time for the thing that we need to take care of manage the house and do things that is very needed in our life in order to keep up because anything that we neglect very soon will collapse. We need to take care the jaw, the, the maintenance of our house. Blame time for learning. Benjamin Franklin he shared his experience. In order for him to invent so many inventions, for example, he is the one who invented the lightning rod. In fact, he is the, the first one who called lightning is electricity. And he invented electricity, he invented all kinds of things. And he shared his principle is he looked in for people who efficient, effective in their field of expert and learn from them. And then learn from what they do so well that he become master of that field that he learned from the man who are so effective. And that's give him the age that he able to go into the place that he become a powerful writer. You know, his, his formal education is very low. But while he worked for his father, while he worked for his brother, he learned how to write. It's got to the point that he writes so well that he have a newspaper. And he used that newspaper to write things, to promote things that people need to know and impact people by his writing. And then he printed, and then he spread it. So he do one purpose with three things. He multiplied his time, and he left a much impact in this nation and for mankind because he planned time for learning. He said he would not satisfy with anything so-called normal. He wanted to be exceeding success in every field that he learned. So that's why he spent time to learn things that is important. This principle is very important that we need to apply into our life too. If you want to become master of any field, just spend 15 minutes a day. And after three years, if you do it right, you become master of that field, whatever field. So spend time, planning time for learning because we have so much to learn, especially nowadays. You know, 
because of the super highway of information, mankind knowledge is double every three years. That's why young people nowadays, they have this well of knowledge and they're very smart compared to previous generation. You see, through internet and through the media, we can get in touch with brilliant minds that they have put their whole life worth of, of, of study into a book, into a piece of, of study that we can learn from them, we can lean from them. You know, back then, it's, it's very precious for us to be able to find one book of an expert in a given field. And then if we have access into library, we can get into something more. But nowadays, we can access into well of knowledge with a very, very effective way that we can learn. So blend time for learning, blend time for rest and recreation. We need to rest. We need to have time for recreation because we need our body to be reduced of stress and rejuvenate. Jesus took his disciple away from the crowd at time because he wanted to help them reduce stress and rejuvenate them because the, the crowds come and go and they don't have time to eat and rest. But Jesus is another master of time management. He used time in his priority beautifully that we see that only three years he did so much. Only three years in his ministry here on earth, he did so much that we look at with amaze. And he has said something that is very important for us to see. He spent early time with God the Father. Doesn't matter how busy the, the previous day, early in the morning he rises up. And you will see that every page of uh, the, the four gospels, you see that either Jesus praying or he returned from his prayer time or he on his way to pray. He know what is really matter and he managed as well. The last thing we need to pay attention to is making time for what is really matter. Now we have a clock, we have a compass, and we need to look at how we prioritize thing in our life. I want to remind you um, a principle that is very important to respect the laws of unallocated time. Unallocated time, I mean time that is not specifically devote to one of your priority. It's a time you spend just doing the flow. You just flow around. And unallocated time flow toward our weaknesses. If our weaknesses is we not manage our time well, and we like to just sit around, lay around to watch TV, and if you don't have time that is really allocated for the important thing, unallocated time will take you to the place of flow to your, the place of your weakness. Unallocated time come under the influence of dominant people in our world. The old saying is that if you don't control your time, someone else will. And in our circle of influence, we have the people who if you don't control your time, they will impose their control on your time. You, we, we all have that kind of people. And when we set the right priority, we would stick with it. And, and we're able to carry out the important in our life. Unallocated time surrendered to the demand of our emergency. We run from fire to fire. And, and we try to uh, get to whatever yell loudest. It's your priority time. Thing that is yelled the loudest, you respond to it. And how many know that there's a lot of things that is, is yell out loud for our attention? 
if our time is not committed to whatever really matters, we will wind up running from fire to fire instead of do the right thing. I have in front of me some thing that I saw 20 some years ago to help me manage my time better. Just imagine with me this tub is our 24 hour. It's a spade that we have. And if we're not um, careful, thing that is we not allocate, time that we not allocate, is begin to fill up our life. Thing that is people impose on us, thing that we waste our time on, like Facebook, Instagram. I, I'm amazed when people say, Pastor, I don't have time. But every time that I have able to look on Facebook, I see that they always put their new status on there. So they have time. But time that is unallocated for things that really matter. So the time is filled up. And, and, uh, and then we, we have things that is it's, um, it's important, but um, it's not really urgent. We put in our life. And we let it continue to fill up our days with things that is, which is flow, with the flow, right? Um, do you have time to go shopping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have time to go out and eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? And we just filled up our life with things. Oh, I almost forget that I need to spend time for things that is really important, God. And, and thing that is important, family. And very soon you see that there's no more space. We overspill and if we, we try to force it in, we see that it's not work. Okay, this overflow with things that is just fill up our time. And this visually tells us that it's very important for us to manage our time. You see, thing that is really important and you not manage your time by prior time thing, you leave things that important and it's overspilled so you cannot fit it in. So, okay, God, I love you, but I don't have time for you. Well, family, yeah, I love you, but Sorry, Facebook has take your time. Uh, friend, I love you, but well, Instagram is uh, very, very crucial nowadays. You know, I have to update picture and things and on. And so we left things that is important out of our life because it's so filled with things. Very important for us to change the way that we manage our time together. And because of things is matter, we need to change the way that we do things. Let me illustrate this for you. Same amount of time. But now, let's put things important in first. God, you're so important. I need to spend time with you. Early in the morning, Put right in my schedule. I wake up, I say hello to you, and I spend time in your presence. Study your word because I need to eat well spiritually. I need your word. Very important time that I spend in your presence and pray, check in with you, and, and receive your guidance and your direction. Family, very important. I will carve out important time to spend with my family. Thing that is really important that I need to take care of, I put in first. So you see, you begin to fill in your life with things that is important first. So called the big rock in our life. And when we fill it in, and then when you have time left, you, have, you can put in things that is it's important but not urgent, but now because you have put things that is really important in your life, you can fill them in. 
you can think that it's not important, but um, because you have time, you can can let it in. Think that you can spare. You can begin to fill your life with. Thing that is less important, but we can can manage it, and we can put it in. So we see that we can fill our life up. But this time, watch this. When will they put in the important thing in our life? We can allow the filler thing that. Um, not very important, but because I have some time left, I can fill it up. See, now I can have everything in my 24 hour because. I put important things first in my time. Set priority in our life is very important. No thing that is matter is important because eternity is hang on the thing that we really discern, thing that really matter in the eyes of God. So his words tell us things that are very important in our life that we need to put in. You see, if we not manage our time well, thing that is very important that we can do, we can help, we can be a blessing, we can minister to people, we can expand the kingdom of God. But we can't because we are not prioritize our time. Twenty-some years ago when I look at this illustration, I begin to apply the principle into my life. When you first start it, get a calendar and begin to put things that is important and you put into, make it like a real appointment in your life that you need to keep. And when you have that in your days, boy, the rest of the thing is this can fill our time. But because we have things that really matter in us, our life is balanced, our priority is intact, and you will be amazed how God can use you to be a blessing to thousands upon thousands of people. We enter into the time of history that the Word of God say that we in the, the end time harvest, so can be saved. People that we can take with us to heaven is waiting on us. The next move of God for our community, for our city, for our nation, that God intends to do, but He cannot use people we don't know how to manage their time. Because they always say no to Jesus. Lord, I love it. But the problem is, I don't have time. Everybody have 24 hours. Right? I don't have 25. Nobody in this place have 25, 26 hours. But with that 24 hours, when you prioritize it and do it well, you can multiply your time. You can do it in a way that God can bless you and you can be a blessing to thousands upon thousands of people. Pray and ask the Lord for strength. This year, if you really want to make a difference, change the way of your thinking, change the way that you behave, change the way that you manage your time. Because my brother and sister, time is short, life is short. I'm approached 55, 55 years old. I don't have much left concerning workforce year. I don't want to waste it. 
Praise God. That as is right now, we know that there's thousands of one thousand of people out there are blessed in my life, and I'm grateful. But I know that all the experience that I gained the last 32 years in ministry, I can double, I can triple the impact if I continue to manage my time well and set things in priority. Things that really matter, I make time for it, and my life will continue to flourish and and cause people to be blessed. For those of you who are young and you approach things, let s begin to bring life into very, very complicated place. When you a student, your life is much more simple. You just eat, sleep, go to school, come home, do some homework. But I, I watch out and I see that people who begin to go into college, if they not prioritize time, prioritize their time, you will see that college student begin to fall off from worship service, spend time with God, and very soon you see that their life in college year is begin to go upside down. And then they carry it into their career time. At the time that they enter into their early career, there's a lot of things going on. Life is much more complicated. Thing that is cry out for your attention is much more. If you don't learn to manage your time now, you you, you may have this notion that when I finish school, I will have more time. You don't. I can tell you that I joined the, the workforce 32 years. I can tell you that every year, your life is getting busier, and busier. So time is the key for us to get there. But you know, you need to know how to prioritize time, your time to do the thing that is really matter. I invite you to come before God at this time. If your life right now you not satisfy, you see a gap between thing that you do and the priority that you supposed to have in your life, and it's not match up. Then cry out to God and say, God, I need help. I need your power to help me set things in its place because I don't want my life to be make up with thing that I'm let it flow into my life. I want thing. That really matter is happening in my life. I want my relationship with you improve this year. I want to have more time in your presence to study your word, listen to you. I want time for my family because they important in my life. I want to have time for things that is really important. To taking care of my body, to learn and improve and become wiser. So I can help people and and reach out and and minister to other people. I need to be more effective. So my brothers and sisters, if that is the place that you are, we cannot go back to change our past, but we can redeem the time. Redeem the time. I see people with the power of God and the and the anointing of God. They have wasted their first half of their life, but when they come in and they allow God to move in their life and set their priority right, do things that is matter, God help them redeem the time that had lost, and they're able to be fruitful in the later part of their life. There's hope. There's future for those who become new. And allow God to change you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the purpose that.
that you have created us for. Thank you, Lord, for revealed in your word to us that we need to focus on thing that is eternal, thing that is matter. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have died on the cross, opened the way for us to restore our relationship with God the Father. Help us, Lord, not to waste that precious gift. Help us, Lord, to enjoy our time with God the Father. Help us, Lord, to spend time with our loved one. Because you have caused us to be a blessing to all the people around us, especially our family. We thank you, Lord, for the guidance and direction that the Holy Spirit can bring to make a difference in our life. And in turn, we can make a difference in other people's life. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who recognize there's weakness in your life and you want the power of God to help you overcome that because your time lately has flowed toward that weakness and you want to break that, Minister, pastor in the house, we are here and want to minister to you. So together, as a church, as a, as a big family, we continue to make an impact in this world. So if you're in that place and you want someone to stand with you and pray with you, I invite you to come forward and let us have an opportunity to minister to you. Learn how to prioritize and manage your time well. Father, we bless with your word today. We ask that you will bless each and every one in this place. Teach us to number our day so our heart can gain wisdom. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and continue to walk in the favor of the Lord. And if you want to join us to the respond, um, sign up with Julianne and um, be back here after lunch. Because we want to share with you and, and together we will have a plan uh, how we will get over there and, and respond. Um, the, the time is um, we, we know that they start 10 o'clock is the prayer time but they have a pre-service um, praise and worship we have Richie, we have Israel Holton will be there and lead the praise and worship so if you're able to come then uh, come early uh, spend time praise and worship and then get ourselves ready to voice our prayer, to pray for this nation, the nation that in crisis. God bless you, and we'll see you later.